Now, without doubt, the best way you can learn and improve your skills is by experimenting and playing. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. We're going to take liquify, curves and blend modes to take this picture, a little bit from this picture to create this picture. Instant abs. Okay, so before we dive into this tutorial, I just want to say thanks to a couple of great friends who thankfully agreed to me using some of the pictures that I've took of them in the past for use in this tutorial. First, we have four times world kickboxing champion at three different weight categories, Stephen Cook. And then we have world natural bodybuilding champion, Nigel St. Louis. You can probably see now why I thought it best to check in with them before I went ahead with the tutorial. But anyway, here's how we do it. All right, so the first thing we'll do, if we're going to add the abs in, is just a little bit of body shaping. So I'll duplicate the background layer by holding down the Command key on Mac, Control key on Windows, and pressing J. And I will rename this layer here to Shaping. And then we'll go to the Filter menu and choose Convert for Smart Filters to give us the flexibility of changing it later if we want to. And then we'll go to Filter and Liquify. Once we're in Liquify, let's just zoom in a little bit. I'm going to make the shoulders have a little bit more shape and we'll bring the waistline in. So to protect the areas around there, we'll use this uh, tool over here on the left hand side called the freeze mask tool. And wherever I brush down now, we see this red overlay and that means that pixels underneath that will not be affected. So we'll just brush down onto this shoulder, a little bit right next to the waistline on that side and a little bit on this side as well. Now we'll get the forward warp tool from the toolbar on the left hand side increase the size of the tool and we'll just push those shoulders out a little bit like so and we'll bring that waistline in as well so not much of an adjustment just a little bit just to bring it in so it matches the thing we're going to do with the abs all right now that we've done that we'll use the thor mask tool and we'll just brush those away and we can see when we turn the preview off and on off and on the background doesn't look too affected maybe it is a little bit on the right hand side just there so what we could potentially do here is use the reconstruct tool and just brush it in to bring it back how it was originally. Something like that is good. So now we do the before, after, before and after. Once we've done that, we'll just click OK to get back into Photoshop. Now that we're back in Photoshop, let's close that down and jump over to the picture of my friend Nigel so that we can grab his abdominals. So we'll get the lasso tool from the toolbar make a loose selection around his abdominal area, then get the move tool, click and drag that selected area up onto the tab for Stephen's picture, keep pressing down and drag it on top of Stephen and then let go to bring the abs in. Now clearly they're too big at the moment, so we'll go to the edit menu, choose free transform and then click in one of the corner handles and drag it down just a little bit to resize it to something around about say there. Need to reposition it now, so I'll just lower the opacity just so that I can see the layers below. I'll get my move tool and I'll drag it around so I get the belly button on top of the belly button, something like that. Might need to resize it just a little bit more. Go for that and just make sure the belly button is sitting on top of the other be belly button just there. Once we've done that, I'll rename that layer to abs and I'll add a layer mask and then with a brush and a black foreground color, I'll just brush away the excess that's dropping down onto Stephen's lower half there, which we don't need. Once I've done that, I'll then increase the opacity back to 100, zoom out just a little bit, and then I'll increase the size of my brush and using the softness, the feathered edge of that brush, because you can see here my brush is at 0% hardness to help this to blend in better, I'll then just brush around the outside, taking away the excess area that I don't want just to leave me with those abs. So we'll go to maybe around about, say, something like that. It's looking good. 
All right, now that we've got the abs in place, let's turn off that abs layer. I'm going to add a new blank layer, and this one I'm going to call Swatch. And this is where I need to sample the colours of both Stephen's skin and Nigel's skin. Now to do that, first of all, I'll go to the window menu and choose to get the info panel because that's going to be invaluable for us to do this. And I'm going to get the eyedropper by pressing I on my keyboard or coming over to the toolbar. And you'll notice in the options bar at the top of the screen, it says mine says five by five average. It might be by default, yours says point sample. You want to go for something around about five by five average. If we just leave it at point sample, when you press down, you might not get the exact color that you want. So if we go for a bigger area using something like five by five, when we press down, Photoshop's gonna take an average of all the pixel colors around it to give you a better color to use. I'm also gonna make sure that where it says sample, I set that to current and below. Now what I'll do is I'll zoom in and I wanna choose an area of Stephen's skin that is neither a highlight or a shadow. So I'm gonna go for somewhere around about this on the upper part of his chest, maybe around about there would be good, and press down. Now when I press down, that color, that five by five average of where I press down is now set as my foreground color over in the toolbar. So I can just get my brush and just brush a very quick swatch there on top of the picture, which obviously I can turn on and off just over there in the layers panel. So that now is the average kind of color there, if you like, of Stephen's skin tone, which is neither a highlight or a shadow. I need to do the same now with Nigel. So let's just get the picture of Nigel. We'll get rid of this selection just here. I'll get my move tool and I'm gonna click down and drag the picture of Nigel up on top of the tab of the picture of Stephen, then drag in on top of Stephen's picture and then let go to bring Nigel into the layer stack on top of Stephen. So let's just zoom in. I just need to sample again, like I did with Stephen, an area of Nigel's skin that is neither a highlight or a shadow. I'll do that using my eyedropper and I'll go for maybe somewhere over here on his shoulder because that's not overly lit and it's not too dark. So maybe somewhere around about here would be good and I'll press down. That color is now sampled as my foreground color. So I could actually delete the layer containing Nigel. Let's zoom out a little bit. I'll get my brush and let's just add a brush stroke there of Nigel's skin color. Now what you'll notice as I move my cursor around the picture of Stephen and on top of these swatches here, the red, green and blue values are constantly changing. Now for me to be able to make the changes I want to do, it's gonna be much easier if the red, green and blue values of these two swatches here are static so I can see them and I don't have to keep putting my cursor over them. So what I'll do is I'm gonna get the eyedropper tool again and this time put the eyedropper on top of the swatch containing Stephen's skin color and hold down the shift key so you can see now it actually changes to give us this little icon here and I'll press down. And we see this little target with a number one. If we now look over into the info panel, we can see we've got a static readout of what those red, green and blue values are for that particular color. And we can see 158, 140 and 136. So number one is Stephen's skin tone, skin color, in the red, green, and blue values. Let's now do the same for Nigel. So again, I'll put the eyedropper on top of Nigel's skin tone here, hold down the shift key, press down. That now gives us a number two, and if we look over in the info panel, we have a static readout for Nigel's skin tone, 108, 84, and 74. Now all I need to do is change Nigel's red, green, and blue values into Stephen's red, green, and blue values to make that change. Now to do that, I'm gonna use a curves adjustment layer. So I'll come to the top right hand corner and click to add a curves adjustment. And you can see it here. Here is the red, green and blue composite, but we also have each of the individual red, green and blue channels. Now what I don't know is whereabouts exactly on each of these channels, the values for Nigel's skin tone fall. So what I can do is whilst I'm using the eyedropper is to put the cursor directly over where it's got this little target for the number two. And whilst it's there, on Mac I hold down the command key, and on Windows I hold down the control key. I then also hold down the shift key, and then just click down within this target area. And when I do that, what you'll notice is, in the red channel, we've got this little permanent mark. That's exactly where the red value for Nigel's skin tone is. What it's also done though, if I look at the other channels, it's also given me an exact point where the green values are, and an exact point where the blue channels are. Also, the great thing is we've got editable input and output values. 
Now let me show you why that's important. Let's now go to the red channel. Now if we look in the info panel, the red value for Stephen's skin is 158, but the red value for Nigel's is 108, and we can see that in the output at the bottom. To help match Nigel's skin tone to Stephen's skin tone, all I need to do is change 108 into 158. I just go to the output, and type in 158. I'll then go to the green channel. Now the green value for Stephen's skin is 140. The green value for Nigel's skin is 84. We can see that in the info panel. We can also see that in the output value in the curves adjustment. So all I need to do is type in the output value 140. Lastly, we'll go to the blue channel. The blue value for Stephen is 136. The blue value for Nigel is 74. So I come to the output and I change 74 to 136. And we don't need the swatch now, so I'll just click on that layer and press delete. Now what you're seeing at the moment is the adjustments here and the curves affecting the whole picture. Obviously we don't want that, we only want it to affect the abdominals that we're adding in. So let's just turn on the abdominal layer, click on the actual curves adjustment layer, and at the bottom here we have the clipping mask icon so that the adjustments we've made in the curves only affect the layer directly below which is the abdominals. So I'll click to add a clipping mask. Now we can't expect just one adjustment layer to get this right on the money, so now is the time to just have a bit of a play to tweak the final look. So what I'll now do then is I'm going to close down that info panel, we no longer need it, but we're going to start to play around now with this curves adjustment layer and see what else we can do to help it to blend in. So I'm not going to click on any of the red, green and blue adjustments, but I'm going to click on this white line here where I can click lower down and push up to brighten the mid-tone areas and click further up and drag down to bring down the highlight areas to say something like that. Now if I zoom in you can see that it's changing the colour a little bit so I think we need to bring back a little bit of red. I'm liking the contrast now, that's, that's blending in a lot better but the colours may be changing a little bit too much. So let's go back into the red channel and I'll click on the red marker there and I'll add just a little bit of red maybe take out some of the blue in this area as well. So let's just go down to the blue channel, and if we take out the blue, we add in a little bit of warmth, and already that's making a huge difference. Really liking that. Something else we could do is we could maybe add another layer, and let's just call this a skin color. And I'm gonna change the blend mode of this from normal to color, and I'll get the eyedropper tool, and I'm just gonna sample a bit of Stephen's skin tone again, maybe just somewhere up here, click down. That'll then sample that color into the foreground and I can get my brush and I'll just brush that over the abdominals like so. And then I can use the opacity just to reduce that effect to help it blend in just a little bit more. All right, so that's looking good so far. Now what else could we do? Let's just click on the curves adjustment. I might just add a levels adjustment and we don't want this levels adjustment to affect the whole picture, so again, I'm gonna use the clipping mask, and we'll just take the whites and bring those down just a little bit. There we go, just a little bit too bright for me in those highlight areas, something like that, looking good. That's looking really cool, liking that a lot. Let's just close that down. Skin tone seems to be matching in, highlights are matching everywhere else on Steven's body, I'm liking that, because the lighting actually on these is exactly the same coming from above. What we could do now, just to finish this off maybe, is to put all of the adjustments for the skin tone into a group. So I'll click on the uppermost layer, hold down the shift key and click on the abs layer, so everything in between is also highlighted. And we'll just go to new group from layers and call this um, abs color. And then I'm gonna add a layer mask to this, get a brush with a black foreground color. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna brush very lightly over this to bring back some of the original part of Steven, which is this little bit of hair around his belly button. So that kind of helps that to blend in a little bit more as well. There's something like that. So let's have a look, let's just zoom out. To get rid of these little markers here, we'll just go back to the eyedropper tool. In fact, we'll just go to the color sampler tool and in the options bar it says clear all. We'll click on that to remove them. So let's have a quick look then, just with a little bit of play in what we've managed to do here. Let's come down to the original background layer, put my cursor just underneath the eye icon, and hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows, press down and release to go before and after, before and after. Instant abs. 
So there you go, a bit of an extreme example, but it just goes to show that by using just a couple of adjustment layers and a blend mode, we can make really light work of something that could potentially be really difficult. So if you're gonna be doing something that isn't as extreme as this, it's gonna be super easy. Anyway, I really hope this video has encouraged you to just get out there and play and experiment because it really is the best way to learn. But as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe if you haven't already. But for now, that's me, I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.